Hello there people of the internet, my name is Oduori Jagero and this is Dialogues with Jagero and today I am having my favorite guest, the guy that makes women happy, <laughs> the vagina whisperer. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Masimba. How you doing? Ooh, How's 2024? Ooh, ooh, things have started a hot. Hot, eh? I've had the rain. <laughs> Talking about the fluid. Uh-huh. You know? And women getting wet. Right. Oh, man. Eish. Eish. <laughs> the so women should get wetter. Yeah. Mm. Because, uh, but we, he, we need to solve <laughs> a few problems first. <laughs> you know? Uh, when women, I assume that when women are wet, uh, 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 are wetter, yes. then we, as men, we don't have a lot of problems. Now, you are like bringing a woman to the, to the, to the, you know, to that state. To the pinnacle. To the pinnacle. Uh -huh. You know? Of her soft tissue getting moist. Yes. Uh -huh. So it can be hard. Yes. So Dorin is saying that women should eat the foods that would contribute to uh, you know, them having fluids. The body should have a lot of fluids, and the body cannot have a lot of fluids if you're not putting fluids in your in your body. Probiotics, true, true, true. you know, yogurt, like you said last time, true. and it should be fermented yogurt, not this sweet, sweet yogurt with nothing to offer. Right. You know, uh, we had. So it uh, should be a change of diet as well. A change of diet, and then mm -hmm. this lady called uh, Robata. Okay. Your favorite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she talked about Mr. Papo. Did you did you see that? I, I, I yes, I, I did. What I did. did you think about her interview? Um, well, I thought she she told her truth. Yeah. Um, I'm not new to sex toys. I've been dealing with sex toys since uh, since the mid '90s. So for me, sex toys. Are there was there were sex toys in the mid '90s. Yes, there were. Mid '90s. Yes. 1994. 95, those must, 96, those, those yes. must have been dildos, not not vibrators. No, the, the, the thing is, there were sex toys. The only difference between a dildo and a vibrator is it vibrates because it has a mechanism where it's either charged by the same way you charge your phone or by a battery back in the day, but today you charge them the way you charge your phone. So it's a mechanism that causes to vibrate, whereas a dildo is just stiff. Mm. You know, like, your, like your miko to make ugali, that is a dildo. You didn't even know you had it in your house. <laughs> Look at dildo, man. It is. When it's, when it's not stuffing ugali, it could be... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that is bonkers, man. Uh, then you taste it later. Mm, amazing. And I'm not talking about ugali. Though. Yeah, <laughs> there is a guy called uh, Kwajdala. Okay. He was saying that the pennies is yes. going to be the most replaceable thing in 2024. And he was talking about mm -hmm. uh, this Mr. Rabbit thing, yes. the one that can suck and pound at the same time. Yes. You know, that is bonkers. No, we to, be, on, to should, be honest. We should not be having this. No, no, but there, there are men who have sucked and pound just like these toys. The thing is, a lot of men are just lazy. I'm old enough to say that, dude. I'm not here to make friends. Men are just lazy. But they are tired. 2024, we are not dealing with lazy men. Jagero, do not invite me to discuss the lazy men. The only men who are afraid of toys are lazy men. I've owned toys and many other Masimbas. Masimbas. <laughs> Mafisis. Those guys need to step aside. Let us do our thing. Maybe what, they need other hobbies. What do you mean? What do you mean? Train spotting, what, watching birds. I don't know. Photography. I don't know. They can photograph snails. Let's not entertain. <laughs> Let's not entertain lazy men. How, what do you mean by I am the chairman of Masimba and I've said, Masimbas out there, tell your squads we are not entertaining lazy guys. Can you, can you expound? Uh, the only guy who feels his penis is going to be replaced is a guy who himself, first and foremost, doesn't get pussy that often. Why are we discussing that guy? For real. You're, Why are we discussing that guy? You're not being fair. It's not fair. Dude, I'm not a charity. That guy needs to go and log on to some NGO. They're fair. I'm not fair. I'm not here to be fair. The girl, where I've reached, what I've done, people I've met. Even today, I'm going to be having a session with Amasimba later on. Do you think that guy has a, these problems of um, my penis is going to be replaced? I'm not dealing with those guys. We need to elevate. Do you know what I'm saying? You were, you were talking about football just now. All those players, why are they professional players? Why is it that me and you can't go and play for Manu or Arsenal? Why? Why? We don't have the legs. There, yes, and there are standards you have to reach, correct? There's a training scheme. There's every, there are skills you need to gain. When you earn those skills, you will not find vagina so daunting. You will not find these toys 
as a replacement. If anything, the toys will be your friend. You're not always in the mood to get an erection, are you? Madame is horny as hell. Are you just going to switch off her horniness? No. Who is your friend? <laughs> Madame squats. She has an orgasm. She kisses you on the forehead. You <laughs> say, Thank you so much. <laughs> and then when your nigga can walk, he also takes his butt. <laughs> Come on. I just did it anymore. Calm down, my thing. <laughs> so, Come on. Let's let, come on. Calm down. We calm are down. not dealing with laziness. <laughs> we are not dealing with laziness. There's yeah, somebody who say that I am not a professional football player. I am not being paid three hundred and fifty thousand per week. Don't equate me to footballers, bro. My point is this. Well, what do I get paid? My do point I get, is do this. I get, do I get paid do, for sucking? Do, do you watch? Do you watch? Do you watch Formula One? I do. You watch Formula One? No, the the the, the, the Briton is has crossed over to Ferrari. Uh, that's the, that's not the discussion. The point is this: I'm for them you, to I'm, get there. They started with go-karting, correct? What is that? Go-karting. What is go-karting? Come on. The, the, no, okay. explain to me. So I'm a villager. For I didn't the, grow up in the, the UK okay, like okay, you. Okay, okay, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the cheaper version and smaller vehicle compared to Formula One. You start somewhere, basically what I'm saying. And then they elevated. They would not be where they are if they were saying, oh my God, I don't think I can do 300 kilometers an hour. No. There's a guy who starts screaming if you go beyond 120 kilometers. That guy will never be a Formula One driver. That's my point. So right now, the Formula One car is the vagina. If you want to be a Formula One driver of that vagina, whether you're doing Ferrari, whether you're doing Mercedes, you have to gain the skills. There are dangerous corners, Bernard. You see, even the way you do a Ferrari, <laughs> these dangerous corners and these and this crashes. So, some of us men are crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Stop adding yourself to a squad you don't believe you. But the point is this. I would rather hear men say, how can we learn? That's what I want to hear. I don't hear laziness. Laziness is, or oh, my penis is being replaced. Then find another hobby. Don't you know watching trains is a hobby somewhere? It's a real fear, though. Go on, Masai Mara. If you like dangerous stuff, go on at your wild. There are things you can do that don't need vagina. Go swimming. Do something. Now you can be nicer to this man, though. You don't, you don't have to come out in the pool. No, no, no. You see, the thing is, week. I am talking to a certain man who understands exactly what I'm talking about. And he also deals with this rubbish of laziness. Bro, you're never going to change me. I will always support the vagina. That's never going and to that change. Is a, that, is, that, that is a problem that men are having with you. That you have been bought. <clears throat> bought by who? By the pussy holders. <clears throat> okay, what are they bidding? Let them buy me. <laughs> You talked about money. <laughs> Buy me. I'll shift. Buy me. Buy me. I'll shift. <laughs> but until then, nah. Learn to be different. Learn to be different. I'll be very honest with you. What's up happening is women are far more knowledgeable because they research on sexuality. So when you're hoping to give her good game, Kumbi Hashi has already known what good game looks like. When you think you're the Mandingo, she's met Mandingos. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. That's the problem we have. As we discuss toys here, there are homes that will never have a toy. So is the toy is really the problem. There's a guy who will say, you know, my wife loves too much sex. But you're the one who married her. It's funny when the man is the one who wants too much sex. Then we blame it on the woman. Why aren't you giving your man enough sex? And you're tired. Why are you tired? You're his wife. You're his woman. You owe him sex. But when the woman is the one who wants sex, oh, she's a bit slutty. Oh, her friends are bad influence. Oh, the same friends that you want to bang? Let's be real. In 2024, I, you see me, I'm getting older, not younger. My mind's getting younger. I'm vibrant. I go to the gym. I'm happy, but I'm not willing to deal with laziness. We're moving forward, not backwards. Yes? If I start an NGO for laziness, I'll tell you. But until then, we're not dealing with laziness. Let's upscale. Aren't men told, one woman effort? Women are, Where's knowing, the effort? women are knowing too much these days. <clears throat> yes, but they're knowing too much because they're sharing information. And they're sharing relevant information about sexuality. Us men don't. We're too closed. We need to start opening up. When we open up, what do we open up about? 
I'm not going to discuss the size of penis with you. Ah, uh, uh, listen. Quite many women are just sitting now discussing the size of their clitoris. Come on. The problem is we know us men. We rarely share. We rarely share. Especially our problems. All men have money. Yet we're all complaining we don't have money. No one wants to call their friend and say, you know what? I'm contemplating hurting myself. Why? Because things are not working in this house. I can't feed my kids. I can't feed my... We're not doing that. But women are. Women are seeking help. They're talking. Yes. If not to their friends, they're talking. They're getting professional help. We're not. We don't even go and see our own doctor. Yet there are adverts everywhere telling us, go see your doctor sometime. Just do a checkup. Ah, no, no, no. Me and my man. I was built. I've been, I've been, you know that thing called scrotum cancer. I've been trying to go there and check if, you know. Yes. Check my scrotum. You think I should go there? What is it called? But that, that cancer. Okay, let me, okay, let me ask you a question. Uh, why should it be me to tell you? It's, it's your prostate. Mm, yeah, yes. that's what it's called. <clears throat> you should go check it. it. It shouldn't be me telling you. When we share prostate, it should be you. <laughs> Going to check up your post-it. <laughs> if you have a flu, do you ever call me? Yeah. Hey, I'm a bit fluid. Do you think I should see a doctor? I'm just really? asking you. You know you are, you are my senior man. That's a yes, go, my... go as well. Yeah. <laughs> if your instincts are telling you, just go for a checkup. Go for a checkup. It doesn't make you less of a man to go for a checkup. If there's anything to deal with, you can deal with it early. They say that checking for... for... For prostate cancer is very is very bad for men. The way they check it, they put you their fingers. Who, who is a, who is they? So it's a community of guys who their their anuses have just been unplugged so many times. Now they're telling us we should not go. Is that is that it? Who is they? What what's the grounds of them telling us not to go? Who is this? Is it a society? Is it a circle? What is it? What is it? Hmm. Ain't all adjustment circle. What is it? Let me ask you something, yes. Thaka. Mm -hmm. Going into twenty twenty four. Yes. And. Uh, <clears throat> What is your overall uh, general advice that you want to give to both women and men going forward? There are so many things going on in life. Uh, women are saying that men are now stepping up. Men are saying that women love too much money. Uh, there is so much femicide going on. Uh, there are so many, you know, there are wars going on. There is lack of money. Uh, there are so many problems going on. What is your general, uh, you know, uh, opinion about how we should go forward with our lives, uh, you know, with a bias towards, you know, getting getting good sex. Okay. Um, the best way for me to answer you right now is based on an experience that all of us had not too long ago. When COVID checked in, we were all restricted to our homes at some point. We had curfews, we had lockdowns, a lot of the rubbish that's happening right now, that maybe it's financial based, so it's driven by the economics of today and stuff like that. COVID taught us there's so many things that we wake up to in a rush that stress us, that really, if you just sat down in your house and you did nothing, you wouldn't die. I thought COVID would teach us the same things. Whatever your stresses are, if you wake up too early, review whether that job is worth going to. I'm not saying people should leave their jobs. But I've met people who tell me, I work to make sure I meet the expense of my fare. After I remove my fare, what I'm left with is just survive with food. Sometimes I go with just one meal. So are you trying to tell me your existence on this planet is to work for somebody so that you can afford fare? So the one person that gains is the person you work with plus the guy who owns the transport that takes you to work. But you cannot afford three meals a day. You need to kind of step back and say, when you were on lockdown, maybe you ran to Shags. Was that a better deal for me? Because sometimes we're rushing to the cities so that we can be seen in fancy restaurants, so we can have photos for Instagram, so we can eat fancy foods. And sometimes not on our expense, on somebody else's expense. But for all of us who rent to Shags or rent somewhere where you survived COVID, where you were eating three meals, where when there is no COVID, you're eating one meal. Review, is this working for me? Hmm. 
we should also look at how many kids we're producing. I'm sorry, but it is nonsensical to still go with this ideology that kids are a blessing. If there were a blessing, would not be trying to drown them or throwing them off buildings or throwing them in set spits and stuff like that. Having a child is beautiful, but let's also look at a nation. Are we overproducing kids that we cannot manage? A kid is an expense. True or false? Oh, I have one. It's difficult. Yes, and when you're producing them in the name of lavidavi, crap. Lavidavi is not how you get pampas or your food for your child when it's a baby or your school fees later on. Another thing is this. We're also trying to take our kids to some premier school. Where if you really do research, other than you telling your friends, my kid is in that school, so they assume you have money, it's not adding any value to your child. Your child will still leave school at some point and probably just be sat in the house. And you'll wonder, all that school fees are paid. It doesn't justify you to punish a child. Maybe your child is in, the, is, is in a country where clearly companies are leaving the country to go to other countries. So all our kids are going to be messed. They'll all be graduates, but there are no jobs. We never think of it that way. You're paying all the school fees for what? You tell your child to be an accountant. You tell your child to be a nurse. You tell your child to be an engineer. How many engineers are languishing? I've met guys who have four different qualifications. Highly guys. They're chilling in their homes. No jobs. Or the job <coughs> that you do get, you're actually told you're overqualified, but if you take this salary, when you calculate your expenses, <coughs> they're beyond the salary. So you just chill. Hmm. So you have to look at what are the things that are stressing you and try and relinquish them slowly. Slowly. It's the only way. Yes. We're not going to we're not going to make it as a country when we tell people, why don't you just be nicer to one another? That's not how things work. There are things that are triggering people <clears throat> to behave a certain way. Yeah. We have to remove those triggers. Do you see what I'm saying? And also, can we have a debate? We're, in a, we're, we're living in a world where you can't have a debate with somebody. The minute you say something they don't like hearing, they crucify you. And if they're in a group, they cancel you or they out you. You start getting hate mail. We need to have a conversation. Serious? Yes. Do you know why I'm not discussing uh, the femicide? Because what I want to tell people, people don't want to hear. And I don't want to be discussed or I don't want insults on social media. It's very sad that I have to say that, but I also have my own opinions. I know the dynamics of what's happening, but I don't want to share them because there's going to be a flock of guys. Yes, especially these uh, woke, overly sensitive people who are not going to like what I'm going to say. And what's going to happen because I'm a man? I'm going to be called an enabler. I'm going to be called, oh, I thought, you're, I, I thought you're for women. You sound like you're against women. No. I'm sorry. Problems are not solved by sugarcoating what the social problem is. <clears throat> the other day, I was having a conversation with a grown woman just like myself. She had to tell me. We were having this conversation, having a drink. We were talking about the same femicide thing. She, as a mother, said right now, I would nima my daughter money before. But if my daughter tells me, mom, I want two Gs. I'm sending her two Gs. I don't want to hear my child was dismembered in an Airbnb. And I heard what you say. Because we all have kids. And for those of us who have daughters, we understand the problem. Even if you don't have a daughter, if you understand you, what human value is, you understand no one wants to hear that child was killed. My but unless we discuss the social problems that are really ailing us, this is not going to change. What are our social problems, Mateka? If you are going, if you just, a, a minute ago before we started this podcast, you came out and said that I don't want to be discussing things with cowards. People who are cowards. 
I don't want to be sitting in this podcast and discussing with another coward. <laughs> You know, Jagaro, I know you so well. The minute I try to tone down what I really think, I knew you were going to do that. I could just see it coming. I just say, any minute now, any minute now, and there you go. Okay. Let me, let, yes. It's as simple as this. Yes. Men should not be killing women. No, Fact. I agree. Yes. Are serial killers going to end? Because you and I want them to end. No. no. Are people with mental problems that listen to a voice in their head and they, that voice is telling them, I want you to go across the road and kill your neighbor. And they hear that voice long enough. Do you think that guy's brainwaves and how he's thinking is going to end just because you and I are having a conversation about it? No. They're professionals who understand why that guy thinks that way. Right now, they are. It's happening all over the world. It's not a Kenyan phenomenon. Unless we address why people are behaving the way they're behaving. Look at it this way. A girl moves from one far area to go to another area to meet a man she does not even know. And something terrible happens to her. The first question I have to ask myself is what caused her? What gave her that momentum to say, you know what? It's worth the risk. What was it? Lack of? Lack of resources. There you Lack go. Lack of money. There you go. Now, this is not going to get better by just telling girls or women, stay in your homes, be safe. Telling men, can you treat women the way women are supposed to be treated? There are characters out there who care less. The other day in a group, I actually saw... <laughs> Women agreeing with another woman. Do you know what she said in that group? Mm -hmm. She said, I know guys are talking about us being safe and everything, but if a guy offers me 50 Gs, I'd rather die in that apartment than not have the 50 Gs. And women were saying, yeah, we get you. I'm like, what? I'm trying to persuade you not to do that. But you as a woman are telling other women that you would rather die. And I'm seeing other women. I'm not, I'm not even seeing one saying, you know what? You're a guy. I'm worth more than 50 Gs. We've gotten to the point where if you will leave 50 Gs, then you're stupid. Me, I'll go. Because when I have the 50 Gs and I've not been killed, I can call you and say, guess who's 50 Gs richer? While you are still Wondering when you're getting your next meal. That's where we're at. That's the context. And that's a very dangerous one. So who am I to tell women what to do or how to behave or how to be secure when their own women are telling them that 50 Gs is in today's we, 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 world. We have, we, have, we, have talked about, we have talked about the issue of recklessness. Yes. And, uh, and being safe. Yes. And obviously, if the, if a house is on is on fire, you don't you don't you don't you don't rush into that house unless you're a fireman. Yes, Cindy. And equipped. Yes. To deal with the fire. Yes, unless yes. you're a fireman and yes. equipped to deal with the fire. Yes. Uh, there are also a lot of women who are saying that most of the people that are sort of doing these things to them yes. are people they don't they they have known for a long time, and they are not necessarily people that that are that are strangers to them. Okay. You see. Okay. So I think the, the the problem that we are having here is that on on one hand we have got people who are we have got ladies or yes. or humans yes. that are reckless. Yes. That are making moves. Yes. That are that that are leading them into a landmine. Yes. And then there are ladies who are genuinely having relationships with people that they know. Yes. And then they are getting hurt. But you realize men are also dying. Eh? <laughs> hey, my friend. But the context of men is you, he died on duty. I don't know. Hey, man, man, man dying is a different uh, issue altogether. Yeah. You know? So how do you, how do you marry the two? The, here is somebody that is, being, that is being hurt or insulted or killed. Like, for example, a yes. woman dying in marriage. Right. You get? 
And then the other one. What does that look like? How dying in marriage? What does that being mean? killed in marriage by the husband? By the husband, okay. You okay. know. Mm-hmm. And then there is a Nigerian in a part in an apartment in Roisambu. Yes. You know, and the, and meeting this girl on social media. Yes. And telling this girl and dropping this girl a pin. Yeah. And this girl taking the next motorcycle all the way to Roisambu. Yeah. Gets into a room and finds yes. three Nigerian men yes. who are honey as hell on cocaine. Yes. Who are high on cocaine and honey. Right. You know? I love the way you profile them. May I continue? <laughs> 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 uh-huh. And he's saying you're giving her sex or you're dying. Right. Okay. And he's saying I'm not giving you sex and then she ends up dying. Yeah. How how do we how do we have this this conversation? How do we separate them? Because I'm glad I you brought I've, that up because even the stats for the married guy could be higher. Yeah. Um, I I have a feeling. I don't know what the stats are, so mm, I can't pretend mm, I do. Mm. But I've, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. That the stats of men who are married killing their yeah. wives. Yeah. Must be much higher yeah. than the incidents we've had with Nigerian guys, yes. or just Airbnb incidents where women have been killed. Yeah, but that's not a discussion. Yes, right now, mm. I get you. Mm. But then now, yes, and the question is, how do we have a discussion about everything? How do we have like, yeah? I'm sorry, but we it it must be, it must be a very intense national debate. Even our politicians need to weigh in this and really feel it. Don't do it because you're, you're, you're coming up with a campaign to make some money. Do it because you actually care about what the next generations look like and mindsets. Because, yes, scarcity of resources are making people risk a lot. The latest story I had, whether it's true or false, I don't know. What is the story? But some young guy who was delivering, who was supposed to be cleaning a carpet at some apartment where there were Nigerians, he threw himself off the fifth floor and died. Mm. Speculation is when he went into the apartment, maybe those guys just wanted to do something crazy to him. I don't know. I don't have the facts. But you see, first and foremost, I agree with it is good we start at least monitoring people's movements. Yeah. It's like when you check into a hotel, you leave your details, don't you? Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, you do. You do. To safeguard everyone, yeah. we should have those. That I'm for. But we also need to look at the scarcity thing because it's real. It let's, is let's, real. let's talk about the scarcity thing. Yes. The woman that was sitting here before, yes. you know, uh, her name is Emily. She told a very horror story mm-hmm. of her growing up. Okay. Without a father, right? Without a mother, the mother mm. is there, but she's in the village, right? And she's in the city by herself. Okay. And the phrase that she told me, mm-hmm. uh, that that is not leaving my head, is that I was always feeling like I don't belong, I don't have anything, I don't have food, I don't have money, I don't have shelter, I don't have anything. And she was telling me that she was going to this guy because in this guy, he saw somebody who could provide. Okay. She saw somebody that can provide. Right. You know? And mm. and when you talk about resources, okay. and you talk about the fact that uh, people are so disparate, and that is why sometimes they can... Uh, how then do we deal with it? What do you tell somebody that is in a situation whereby... They need the fifty thousand, you know, but they can't get it, and they are the, the only way of getting it is to risk their lives. How do we how do we help this person? Okay, what I found is you're not going to tell somebody who's grown up what to do. You're it, not. Mm. Um, today, there's a generation that's not willing to listen, because the simple question is. So you don't want me to go for the 50K. Are you giving me 50K? Yeah. Because I've not forgotten the 50K. <laughs> yeah. Are Just, you giving me the 50K? Are you giving the 50K? If you're not, then I'll go to the one who is. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. A lot of our human tr- communication today is very transactional. Unfortunately. It is. There's what men want and there's what women want. Willing buyer, willing seller. Oh, that's what it boils down to. Yes. 
And that's very dangerous. Because now it's not about, can we meet and just have coffee? And chill. So I can evaluate yeah. how you smile, how you sneer. Because if I'm going to see you beyond today, just your mannerisms now will give me an idea of whether I would like to see you again. But no. 50 G skips all this. I would rather we're trading. I would rather I would You want rather, this? I want this. I would rather I would rather cry in a Range Rover. Yes. And I'd rather cry in a Range Rover is not a joke. It's real. <laughs> it is real. They would rather cry in a Range Rover. It is real. How many want to be in a SQ? And then you move to a slightly bigger SQ. And then one day you're in a one bedroom and a two bedroom. One day maybe you bought some land while you were doing all these SQ maneuvers. And now you're building on that land. How many people want to hear that story? When I talk to young people, they usually tell me, yeah, but that means that I'm going to gain whatever it is that I want 10, 15 years from now. Mother come here, I want it today. I don't want to learn how, how, how expensive it is to go to SA. I want to find somebody who can take me to SA. Yeah. I don't want to buy the ticket. I don't buy the ticket. When I'm looking like this, how can I buy the ticket, Mataka? How? <laughs> That's where we're at. How can you save somebody who doesn't want to be saved? First of all, they'll tell you you're saving me from what? If anything, you're promoting poverty. You're telling me to go away from 50 Gs or SA. They have a point, but it's dangerous. That's my point. I'm not against you getting 50 Gs. But I just wish the 50 Gs doesn't land you dead. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I can't gauge who's going to kill you and who's not. That's not going to be policeable. Trust me, it's not. But can we really be more careful in who we engage with? Can I get to meet you? Can we have a chat? Before I go to that apartment? Yes. Have coffee? Yes. Let me feel safe with you because that's another thing. There's an energy I feel safe with. Yeah. Even I as a man, I can go out on coffee with a woman and something, my instinct tell me, I don't think we're going to have another coffee. This one did not go badly. We laughed. We, as in, it just went well. But there's just something that's telling me that I don't think I want another coffee. Probably. If you, ha if you, if you go for the coffee, you don't get away with, you don't, nobody gives you 50,000 after, after a coffee date. Who, me? Nobody gives you 50,000 after a no, coffee No, no, no. Nobody gives me 50 Gs <laughs> after a coffee date. <laughs> you know, but I you, need you, to reevaluate my life. But you, but you, no, no, I'm saying. Yes. Nobody gives you 50,000. We were talking about the 50,000 yes, 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 yes. question. Yes. But now yes. the thing is, nobody gives you 50,000 after a coffee date. Mm. They will have to see, to see you at the apartment. And, and, that, and that's the thing. And that's what I'm saying, that uh, the need for intimate connections, and intimate, I'm not talking about sex, intimate as in, wow, I really got to know you. That's not very needed in today's society it's, with, it's very, with, with a majority. It's very interesting that if you are on Tinder yes. or these other dating applications, yes. they have got safety warnings. Right. And they tell you that for your first date, go and meet in a public place. Yes. You know, and people think that that's a very good thing for the people that made the app to say. Yes. And then it comes to real life Somebody does not want you to give such kind of advice. Which is very interesting because then if you are going to Masai Mara, yeah. you know, they have all, lots of, uh, of things to look out for. Yeah, but we don't care about each other's uh, recommendations. That's the problem in society. Jagera, if you tell me, uh, Maurice, I don't think that trip that you're planning is a good idea. For most people, you'd be like, uh, Jagera is just jealous. 
Mm. Yet if I really analyzed what you were saying, you are right. I should not have gone. We we take people at worst value, not face value. What does that Anything mean? that comes out of your mouth is a negative to me. Yeah. Especially if you're telling me something that's about caution. Who are you to caution me? When you're my parent. We've gotten to that aggressiveness. Where it's come from, I don't know. Maybe it's social media that's gotten us aggressive and all these images we see. We're not trusting even of the people who actually care about our safety. Even when a stranger just tells you, you know what? I've seen there's a certain way you behave. Can you minimize that just for your own safety? There's actually nothing wrong with what that person said. But there are people who are triggered by it and they'll be like, you're telling me as who? Wow. But it's the difference between life and death. Why would you not listen? You don't need to follow it, but you also don't need to be so aggressive. So we've forgotten how to be human. That's the unfortunate thing. We've forgotten how to be human. And then the other thing about... Men are not allowed to speak on these issues. Hardly allowed. Unless you're just, you're just drumming the, the, and, the, the, you know. The, and that's my point exactly. Right now, men are under attack because of brutal things that other men have done. I agree. My issue is we cannot be part of solving the problem when we are being attacked as well. Oh, no, no, Maurice, you should not talk on that topic. Hold on. I'm a man, and it's my way of telling other men to stop this crap. You just took somebody's daughter's life away. That's messed up. The things that I think should be done to you, I can't even say them. But that's just messed up. But if we can't voice why these issues are there, I'm sorry, what, what, how, how can you blame men and then not want men to help in this situation? But us helping is not you telling us what to say. That doesn't help us at all. Yeah. It doesn't. And people are forgetting, men also want to help because men have mothers, men have sisters, men have daughters. Who we want to protect. We have sisters, whether they're older or younger, that we want to protect. We have nieces that we want to protect. We've seen them since they were kids. Let us get to specifics. Yes. Let's get to specifics now, Mateko. Yes. You have a young, you have a young daughter. Yes. Graduated from high school. Yes. Is 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 out there. Right. And I mean, it's all these things that are happening. Mm -hmm. What do you tell her about men? I, I, I'm not going to tell her. That, I think that's where we're going wrong. Um, or whatever. I don't know if I'm asking the question wrong. Can you? Can it's, you? It's, you it's, know what I'm asking? It's, yes, yes, yes. It's yeah. it's 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 uh, it's a human being that can kill her. It's not a man. Okay. Because sometimes uh, some of these women are are sold to these men. By their own friends. I've talked to a few who have done it, but no one got hurt. You see what I'm saying? Pimping. Yeah, so I'm not telling my daughter to watch out for men. I'm telling my daughter to just watch out for humans in general. <laughs> this is interesting. Yes, because her own girlfriend can be told, do you have a cute chick who looks like this or like this? They're describing my daughter. So my daughter is told there's a bash in Naivasha or in whatever. And my daughter says, okay, fine. Now I have to find a way of sleeping my dad. So I need to tell my dad I'm going for sleepover. In Karin. Or wherever. Mm. And then that sleepover is confirmed. Maybe I call somebody and they confirm, yeah, there's an actual sleepover. But because... That sleepover is not as stringent as I am. They slip away from the sleepover. They reroute. Yes. Now they go somewhere else. Where I... my daughter's description was fitting. 
So I'm not going to warn about men. I'm going to warn about humans. That's a very interesting way of looking at it, Mr. Matheka. That's because I'm intelligent, boss. Not an idiot. No, I don't think because you're intelligent. I think I'm because you went, to, you went to that school of yours. What is it called? <laughs> <laughs> they teach people psychology. <laughs> okay, okay. But I, I like the train of thought. Please go on. Yeah, so mm. we have to be very careful who we're trying to... It's not about men. Because the minute you say, teach my girl about men, yes. it's as if men are bad. Yes. There are great men out there. They're great men. They're men just like women who move things and still move things. They're men who can save my daughter's life, if need be. So I can't tell her about men because then all the men she looks up to that are not me, she'll start to look down on them. She'll say, daddy is the only safe man. Yet there are daddies who are doing some bullshit things to their daughters. So I'm going to warn her about humans and scenarios that humans would put her in. Expound. You see, for example, I would like my daughter to know that she's not caged. She's not a caged bird. Because I know what had happens. I, at one point, had the keys to our house. All the keys. Because my father used to say, you're not going anywhere. Then I told myself, I will be going somewhere without his knowledge. So I copied all the house keys. Plus his car keys. Now, my daughter, she's going to do the same thing to me. Regardless of how clever I think I am, she's going to outwit me because she also knows I know my dad. He thinks he's bright, but I'm brighter because I've figured him out. I know how to make him secure. Once he's secure, I'm good. And she's right. The minute I feel she's secure, I'm good. So she knows how to maneuver that. To her own detriment, she does something and she gets hurt. That's my fault. So I'll tell her, look, as you're growing, you're going to want to do a lot of stuff that I don't want. But I'll, I'll allow you in portions. If there's a party you want to go to, I need to know where that party is. I'll drop you at that party. But you're going to be in that party for two to three hours. Then I'm going to come and drop, pick you up. If you don't want my face to be, because I was also like her, if you don't want my face to be seen, I'll park 200 meters away. But I'll be at a place where I can see you come out of the house. So I have line of sight of where my daughter is. Boss, I know humans. She comes in the car. Have you had fun? Good. So now, depending on how your schooling is, depending wherever she is, whether she's in campus, whatever, there's something that will make her feel, make me feel like the next time, you can even have another top up of two hours. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll also try and steer. It's not blockable all the time because there's one thing that you do with your daughter. If you tell her to stay away from certain boys, those are the same boys she's going to be attracted to. So find a way of not, find a way of liking the boy because they tend not to like boys you like. It works magic. If she knows daddy likes a certain guy, a guy suddenly not, does not become very interesting. That one, that one looks like a, like, 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 like a... If you, you start inviting this... people over to, for lunch, oh, Brio, invite him for lunch. How to get to know him? And me and Brio laughing, ah, he's such a <laughs> nice boy. <laughs> they don't like nice boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one, this and one. And even though that's on this a one will note, say This one will say it when we have sex. The, the truth is this. Mm -hmm. Policing is not easy. But don't over police. Because I've unfortunately I've known people who their kid's way of revenge was committing suicide. They were locked in the room and told you're not going out. And I can only imagine what's going on in their head. All my friends are at that party. I'm the only one who's not there. Life's not fair. Life's not worth living. Find her or him dead. Also want to avoid that. So you have to be very strategic on what you disallow and what you allow. You can't be a, I'm not allowing anything because I'm the man of this house. I'd rather see my 
daughter wake up the next morning and hear that I have to go and visit her in a mortuary, to be mm. honest. Mm. So those are things you have to look at. You also have to look at when you were younger, how did you behave so that you can know which way to steer, whether it's a daughter or son, you know how to steer. Um, the one thing that I feel that we must do with our boy child is we must pay more attention to him. No one's doing that. I think that's just a failure on all of us as a society. Because he's growing up in a world where he feels no one cares about him. Because apparently, because he was born as male, everything works out for him. Because your man, money flies into your wallet. If you're a man, a home just appears. If you're a man, you can pay school fees. KPLC even knows you before you know them. Because you're a man. Scrap. Regardless of gender, we're all having the same struggles. So, because I'm saying this because I also have a lot of women who call me about their sons. Oh, I don't think my son is doing too well socially. I'm afraid he's going to hurt himself. He's been dumped five times. And I don't think he's ever had a girlfriend for more than two weeks. It's a mother who's concerned. Because she's thinking, I don't know how much dumping this guy's going to take before he decides to out himself. I can't go scouting for a girl for him, but let me talk to a man who might understand what the hell's going on. And sometimes I have to tell her, I think your son is doing everything he can. But even the pool of girls that he, he, he likes, they're already used to older men who are giving them money. Your son is getting petty cash from you. Petty cash can be two Gs, three Gs. You realize you have a young son today. He takes a girl out innocently for a coffee and he has three Gs. For him, three Gs is a big deal. He's not working. Three Gs. Or give it. He has four Gs. Her bill is two five. Because she ordered something to eat that Milk, had fish in it. Milkshake. Seafood. Milkshake or I don't know what shakes. Something shook. <laughs> So what does he do as a man? He decides, based on his budget, he's no longer hungry. He can't even afford a salad because he has seen the salads are all 800. Mm. Oh, I had a very heavy breakfast before I met Coffee you. Latte. So let me just have a latte. He's just making sure embarrassment is not the end of this state. Is he going to sustain her? First, she's already read him. She already knows, based on what I've eaten, this guy's face has changed. She's also reading him. You see what I'm saying? Because she's been around men where 4Gs is not big one. That's like buying tea and mandazi. But now she's going out with a guy, as we would say, she's going out with the appropriate age guy. But appropriate age guy got money from the mom. Nothing wrong with that, because many people went through that. But... Today, I, would, I don't envy young guys today. I envy myself when I was a young guy because we lived in different times. But today... Tell me more about not envying young, uh, uh, guy, young guys. Um, they're living in a world where dating for them is ridiculously not going to work. They require more resources dating than we do. Dating is not going to work. No, it's not going to work for them. Not with their age group. Dating is not going to work for young men. No, without... no, no, no. Let me tell you this. And, and, and that's, but and I, I think you can be too dramatic. No, I mean, I'm not dramatic. <laughs> I'm not dramatic. Okay. If you look at stats around the world of young guys between ages of 18 and about 30, sometimes a bit less, maybe 25, 70 to 80% of them don't have a girlfriend. Don't have a girlfriend. Why? Lack of resources. When I grew up as a young guy, going to a kiosk and buying her goody goody or mandazi and some Fanta, and I have a Fanta, and we have a Shuka, and we go to a Kapak or somewhere, blah, 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 or in the beach because I lived in the coast and we just do a picnic there. I am content. She's content. 
Why? Because she's thinking it's not about the Fanta. It's not about the goody goody. It's not even if he could afford seafood. It's about I love being in his space. Today, what is your space offering? Bro, you've got a good heart, but I'm not a cardiologist. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's your space offering, dudes? Eh? You think I was talking for you all night for you to start telling me about mandazis? What the hell? Hey. <laughs> eh, is, my ass was not grinding flour. Dude, what are you offering? Oh, but I'm a nice guy. I've got a good heart. I'm caring. I'm loving. Hey, dude. Save that for cartoons, man. I'm a woman. I have needs. I have hair to do. I have nails to do. Exactly. Exactly. It's not your responsibility to do it. However, you want something from her. You want her attention. How else are you going to get it? The days are gone where just even romance today looks very different. Very different. If young girls are telling me going to some of these nice fancy places, for them that's normal. Normal. Then my son and your son, how is that normal for them? How many young guys do you see at Art Cafe? Very few. Why? There are men who are flowering in the, on the, on the who have got flowers on their heads, ones green. People like you. People like that sell crayfish. <laughs> <laughs> I've been attacked. I'm under attack. Masimas, I'm under attack. <laughs> but guess what? If we don't have these Moving conversations, kilos of crayfish, the Chinese. Is, <laughs> if we don't have these, leave my crayfish alone. If we do not have these conversations, Jagero. Wow. We're not moving forward. <laughs> we could sugarcoat them with all these, oh, we're against this, we're against that, marching here and there. But we are not solving the problem by just being angry. We need to have mm. public participation. That's national. Yeah. But I what? want my local... MP or my local chief or my local someone to say there is a meeting about and this is the agenda. What is the agenda, for example? <laughs> so we can fix how young people or how people are just interacting. But Jagero, this started with I'm, I'm an uncle. I have nieces. When I grew up, to bathe your niece was normal. To bathe your son was normal. We even have pictures of when we were kids and our parents were bathing us. Then one day I heard, if you put your niece on the lap and hold her, this is suddenly sexual. You know what I'm saying? The people who twist stuff. The minute I could not hold my niece or my own daughter because I'm a man and men are the ones attacking, the world changed. We need to move away from that. We need to go back to when humans cared about other humans. When we didn't sexualize everything. Are there nutcases out there? Yes. But are we going to solve world's problem by condemning everyone? No. Why is that a solution? So one woman hurt me, so all women are bad. That's a solution. That's one woman. There's always going to be some nonsense in the flock. <laughs> nonsense in the flock. <laughs> yes. But now we can't blame the entire flock. Bad apples. Yes. But if we don't have that conversation, we're not moving forward. Let's wrap up this thing by Let's talking wrap about up. Yes. Uh, low sperm count. Oh, low sperm count. Low sperm wow. count. There are, Where a, do I a, start? There, there's a lady who told me that uh, 
that the reason why we are having I don't know how this is is mm-hmm. is correct mm-hmm. scientifically or biologically you know, okay I never went to school so I wouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, well explained. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that uh, the reason why we are having a lot of girls yes. in the society today, yes, is because we have got men producing weak sperms, because uh, apparently men are supposed to give out the X and the Y yes. chromosome, right? And if the sperm is weak, then I'm not sure why it is the X that right. suddenly. Uh, goes ahead and the, the the Y fails. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't refute uh, what she said uh, because I've not done research on it. Um, I'm sure if a lot of men were sat where I am, the first instinct would be to attack her. But uh, I'm too mature for that nonsense. She must have gotten her information somewhere. Uh, if anything... Uh, I'm I'm willing to go and do some research on that. Um, but what I can tell you is our sperm count has lowered tremendously because over the last two decades, we have adopted a lot of processed foods. We have adopted a lot of foods that have a long sh- um, shelf life, which means that a lot of these foods have preservatives that are chemicals. And most of us don't research on the chemicals. Like, for example, uh, there's a time I read about, um, I've always known that tomatoes are good for us as men. They're good for our prostate. Then I read somewhere I uh, can't remember the country because it's, it's it's a while ago, that uh, tomatoes are now linked to prostate cancer. But this was the twist. It's not the tomato at fault. It's the pesticides they're using on the tomato. So you and I are told tomatoes are great for our balls. So we go buy a lot of tomatoes. We make sure tomatoes are always in our tomato, diet. Tomato, tomato, tomato. Yes. If it's a salad, if it's uh, normal stews, tomato, tomato. Uh, and obviously, the more the more you cook something, the more the nutrients you reduce. So we've got a lot of salads and stuff like that. Yeah. Our normal um, kachumbaris and stuff. So you and I are thinking we're covered when it comes to tomatoes because we eat a lot of tomatoes. I hope that you're enjoying this program. I just wanted to break this program to tell you that if you like the images that you're seeing, the video, the editing, we can do your corporate work, we can do your podcast, we can do your documentary, we can do anything, especially if you're building something and you want to showcase it, we can always do that. So we are going to be leaving our contact on the description of this video. Please check it out. So if you have a job and you are you like what you're seeing, the editing, the, the image quality, you know, contact us and we can do something amazing just like this for you. So thank you very much and back to programming. Processed foods are convenient and they're cheap. Young men today are buying all these Viagras and Cialis more than older guys. Why? Because they're the ones eating the cheapest foods. All these cheap sausages, all these chips we do, all these chips we um, do. weird sausages uh, that for twenty five bob, and, that, bob. And, and that one, that one that looks like spaghetti that they are. What, what she wants? Isn't that the Indomie? Oh, yes, what? yes, that one. The one you just boil. Yeah. Whatever. No, no, no. I heard that it's a terrible meal. Yes. However, do you know how many young people are eating it? It's their staple food. It's so easy. I think a packet of five or six, I think it's like 200 bob or less. I don't know. But that's so cheap. 200 bob can have me have what? Maybe stretched out four or five meals? Wow. That covers me for three, four days, man. <laughs> you see and, what I'm saying? And, and it's such a mono diet, useless. Yes. Another thing is this. Um, and you're not going to like this because I'm sure you like Ugali, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugari, Ugari over-processed, is yes, but over-processed food. For example, your galis, your chapatis, we have a lot of carbohydrates 
that are not good for our sexual bodies. I, I'll tell you this because uh, if I can't use myself as an example, then what the hell am I talking about? Go ahead, go ahead. And uh, when I change a lot of things about my diet, and I had to do it because I was getting older. There's a clock I can't stop. I feel great because I go to the gym at least four or five times. I feel great. But I had to change. Four or five times a day, uh, a week. A week. But I had to four. change a few things. That is every day. <clears throat> See, a week has seven days, but for you, it's every day. Yes. <laughs> for you, you're thinking, why are you doing that? No, because it, it's, it's just great. I feel good. I, I feel energized. I, you, are, but, you have gyms in Ukambani. <clears throat> <laughs> Ukambani, <laughs> we're under attack. This guy is attacking Masimba. Ukambani. I don't know what's next. You know, the, last, the last time I was there, it was a very, it was a very beautiful town. Exactly. Ah, you loved it, didn't you? And you, and you need to come back. I'm and you're coming, coming back. back. Yes. Bava, we're not, we're, this is not a negotiation. You're coming back to Pachacos. Yeah, we'll yes. And I'll take you first. The minute you land, we'll go to the gym first before we do anything. Gym. We'll go to the gym. Yeah. So anyway, um, some of the things I had to, for example, um, it's now eight, nine years. I've not, I don't take sugar anymore. Yeah. Sugar is the one thing that they don't tell you is killing us. Sugar. And I'm talking as a guy who used to take three, four teaspoons of sugar in my tea. So if I'm, I know sugar, I wasn't the one teaspoon guy, three, four teaspoons. If I hadn't stopped, I'd probably be you on love my it sweet like Ronaldo. <clears throat> there you go. I had to wean off sugar. So by the time I was taking one teaspoon, I could actually think that one teaspoon was six. Then I had to move myself from your normal uh, salt to either sea salt uh, or pink salt. What is wrong with this normal one? Um, as you get older, it has a lot of ailments, especially if you're somebody who gets a bit hypertensive or you might be stressing over things like high blood pressure and stuff like that. It's good to just move. I'm not saying wean off salt. I'm just saying wean off the salt we usually use and use salts like sea salt or pink salt and stuff like that. But that's a choice. Is it cooking with it or at the table one? <clears throat> Sorry? Cooking with it or the, or the one that you use on the table? No, I, I prefer cooking for it, but I can add, I can add, I can add sea salt to maybe if it's an egg or something, but I can't add normal salt now because I've weaned off myself. When it is on it the table. It affects me. When it is on the table. Yes, it affects me. So, but when it's cooked in food, fair enough. Like for example, if I come to your place and you've cooked with normal food or whatever, I won't taste it. But if you tell me to go and have nyamachoma and the way we take the meat and then we dip it in the salt and I eat it, it'll start to affect me. But that was my own personal choice. But there's things that men need to we know. First and foremost, we eat too much carbohydrate in this country. Too much carbohydrate. I was told that it is an African problem. It is. And funny enough, everything we eat is not African. Look at maize. It's not African. It was brought here. These are things that people don't even know. What we call chapati is not even our own. Wheat. Chapatis was brought here by who? The coast area. By the Red Indians. Indians. The Arabs. Most of the foods we eat, but carbohydrates, we need to wean off the carbohydrates. We just do. And Duma? Duma is good. Duma and the sweet one, what is it called? Yes, but how many of us will we, eat it regularly? My, my daughter hates it. Fine, but it, she can find something else. First and foremost, don't force your daughter to eat something she doesn't like. Find an alternative. I'm, I'm, I'm good you talked about your daughter. We're also overfeeding our kids. Science today has proven our kids or even us as humans don't have to eat three meals a day. That is what we were taught. We need to relinquish it. Because even the person who taught us is no longer doing it. Your body can survive with very little food as long as it's rich food. The reason why... Have you ever eaten a, a meal... And then within two hours, you feel hungry again. Yes. And you know you ate quite a massive... So you've been wondering, why am I hungry? Because I don't think there's any space. That's because the carbohydrates cause our mind to think we've not eaten. So we, we need to get off 
food that tricks our mind that we're not full. I've seen a guy eat an entire pizza by himself. And within 30 minutes, he said he's hungry. Entire. 30 minutes. He said, hey, dude, hey, I'm feeling a bit. Now, I knew what it was. The ingredients in those pizzas. Your stomach is full, but your brain is being told that we're not full. We need to eat. So our kids were overfeeding our kids. At some point, we're going to have an obesity level of kids in Africa that we should not be having. These are lifestyle problems that we have the ones who have adopted them, who have overcome them. Prostate cancer was not a thing in Africa. It is a thing now. Cancer in itself was not a thing in Africa. Now it's a thing. You think it just came from nowhere? It came from the things we are trying it to digest. From global warming. The, it, the things we're trying to digest in our systems. We're not giving our systems enough time to digest. I started taking supplements, Mateka. It's very hard to take supplements. You're the one who introduced me to supplements. But I've, very, I've been very, taking them for it's, years. It's very hard to take them. No, why is it's it hard? Like, it's like taking medicine every day. Okay, Shit. that's the problem. You're calling it medicine. It's not medicine. It's a supplement. But then why, are they, why are the tablets so big? I'm sure you've put bigger things in your mouth. So stop complaining. You're whining now. You become those whiners I was talking about. <laughs> those weak men that yeah, you yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> they come on. Come on. It's your tablet as big as your fork, and you're always putting a fork in your mouth. Uh, you're not listening to me, bro. No, 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 no. I've never heard you telling me how come they make forks so big. Or spoons. You don't swallow forks. Do you use a spoon or a teaspoon? A, a spoon. Then why don't you use teaspoons? Now they complain the things are big. So right now I'm taking <laughs> surely. Right now I'm taking whatever. What is it called? Uh the one for I've been having a foggy brain. So they told me to be taking the omega three. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh because I am just over forty now, yes. They're telling me that I need uh, to 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 pack uh immune. Immune whatever. They call it immune something. Mm -hmm. Immune uh Im immune tabs for okay. immunity. And then I'm doing vitamin C okay. and, and D three. Right. Then there are many, I mean, looks like you're taking medicine every day. Uh, there's L, L arginine. Mm -hmm. That's good for us, especially for what is L arginine? Uh, it's a supplement that's good for our sexual. There's a difference. It is not Viagra. It is a supplement that is good to optimize our sexual body. So when need be, we can perform. Tell me more about it. I'm, I, th I think a lot of women will be interested in giving it to their men. Okay. Uh, and that's the other thing. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming men also want to take it. I don't want women giving the men only. Well, I want I'm, men I'm just, to be interested. I'm just, I'm just giving a taste to it. That's, 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 what, that's, what, that's what we are talking about. It's yes. up to, at and, the end and, of the day. Another thing, that's, the, another thing that's very important is uh, I would like people to start, I think I've mentioned this before, salary. Mm. Salary, you talked about wetness. Salary is amazing. What is this salary thing, bro? The, the disclaimer is this. It's not medicine. It's like when you buy a car, you have to know that you're investing in fueling that car. Your body is the car. You want it to be able to perform. So you fuel it with the right fuels. Salary is in most markets. If you've got a juicer, brilliant. You don't have a juicer, you can blend it. Because of that tangy acquired taste, you can add like 20%, 80% celery. So 20% is watermelon and 80% celery. Blend it, or if you juice it, even better. If you've got a juicer, invest in a juicer. Take celery, the way you take daily tea or coffee, even minus the tea and the coffee, just take celery. Give yourself two, three months. See the changes in your body. Also reduce. I'm not saying remove all carbohydrates, but just reduce. If you used to eat two chapatis, eat one or half. Mm. If you used to eat two kilos of ugali like jagero. Do you know how small um, me, uh, half chapatis? That's besides the point. That's really besides the point. <laughs> That's besides the point. I'm trying to save people. You're trying to kill them. Let's <laughs> let's be on the same page. Okay, okay. okay. I'm trying we to. Are, we are you on see, the same page. you've asked me to help men. Yes. So now that I'm helping them, yeah, should stay away. Yes. Let's not kill <laughs> men. Like let's now way. help them. <laughs> yes. First, reduce sugar. Reduce your sugar. How Alternate about, your salt how, how to different honey? salts. How about honey? Honey is brilliant. 
But now don't start taking six spoons of honey. You're not helping yourself. Even those things that are good for you, if you overdo it, they're bad for you. Take a spoon of two. Cambas used to make good honey. That yes. Nowadays, they're crooks. I totally agree with you. <laughs> totally agree with you. We were known for honey. Now, I don't know what the hell we're known for. Yeah. There's molasses there and many other things. It's crap. So I usually get <laughs> what, what what I'm looking forward to because I've been buying a lot of Australian honey, but Australian honey is expensive. Where are you buying it from? Sorry? Where are you buying it from? From the supermarket. It's the only place I can find it. How do you know it's Australian? That's besides the point because I've tasted it before. It's honey I've had for a very long time. Yeah, but I'm just asking so that I can know what to buy. Yes, How do but, I, when I go to the supermarket? But, but to be honest, it's, it, it's not because it's Australian because that just means it was a bee in Australia. I don't think that bee knows it's Australian. <laughs> it's just the the purity of it. Exactly. So w- uh, what I look for I also is, love the one for South Africa. I, I don't I I've not tasted it so I wouldn't it's know. It's beautiful. Uh you see the the painting behind you it's got that uh it's got like um like a tea color like almost yellow but I like my honey that color. It I don't like the aftertaste of acacia honey. A lot of Kenyan honey is from the acacia tree. And basically, it's because whenever you whenever you have bees, one thing they do is they go and fend for themselves, and they travel at about four kilometers radius. So most of the trees they'll find in our region is acacia. So what I've done, which I'm very uh, looking forward to this, the end of this month, February, I'll be doing my first harvest of my own honey why because i got a a hive and then i planted one. a lot of one one one, one, one. it's a trial um one. i planted a lot of uh, sunflower cuz sunflower the flower is what produces that yellowish honey that i like you see and that's why even what are, what does it take to do a hive because i also want to do a hive for kokweto uh, just buy it and then you buy it from somebody who knows what they're doing. They come in and install it and stuff like that. Then they come and show you how to harvest. Simple as that. Beautiful. Hmm. And you see, I'm doing all these things because at some point, yeah, uh, I don't want to be spending so much money on honey. It's so expensive, bro. Yeah. Because I, uh, I, bought, I bought one yesterday for 500, but I don't like it. It's shit. It's very bad. And that's because you bought it for 500. And that 500 is what, what uh, size? Very small. Very small. I think a very small. I think 300 ml or whatever. Yeah, because uh, per month I'm spending 5 to 6 Gs on honey. Surely. So now I want my own honey. 5 Gs on honey? Yes. But but it's because it's quality honey. Uh, you're the ones who should date, bro. But hey, dude... Aren't you guys taking HGs, 10Gs, whiskeys in funny clubs here in Kilimani? Mm-hmm. Mm. So you're my, my st- honey is a problem. You're starting to make sense. My honey is a problem. You're starting to make sense. My honey is safeguarding my health for a month. It's actually the size of, uh, of Your two drink babies. is causing you to It's actually the size of And two have babies. a hangover. My honey is a problem. No, I get you. <laughs> Think about it. I get you, bro. You see, so you have to look at, you know, just balance things out. But men, celery is very important. Zinc supplements are very good. Uh, Ile, Ile, you mentioned... Ma, ela, e what? Ele? Sorry? The one that you said for sexual well-being. L-arginine. Honey goat weed is also a very good supplement. Hmm? Honey goat weed. Honey goat weed. Maybe I should mention this. I do... There are men who ask me what, what they need. And then I import a lot of the supplements for them. So they Honey goat weed. Just, Sorry? Honey goat weed. It's called honey goat weed. Honey goat weed is a herb. You know, see like the way we have skumawiki and stuff like that. It's a herb that was from South America. And the reason why it's called honey goat weed is it's a weed that goats, so the shepherds would take their goats out and the goats would eat the weed. Well, one thing the shepherds realized is every time they consumed the weed, the goats would go in season. Who? Oh, yes. Another Viagra. Exactly. But this one now is natural, not uh-huh. synthetic. Uh, then humans started taking it and they realized, oh my God, it works for both men and women. Now, the reason why I import it is 
there's a lot of fakes imported around Africa. A lot of fakes. So there's certain companies that I trust a lot because I use their products as well. So what men usually do is, um, I'll just get the consignment for you. So you'll send me the money and I'll import it for you and I'll have it delivered to your house. As simple as that. Obviously, it comes at a fee, but I'm doing it for you, well, and I'm also good, great. Men have been thinking that you're 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 a, you're a, you're a vagina a vagina. No, no, no. I help men, but I help men who are not complaining and just want help. Complaining is not getting us anywhere. We don't have the privilege to complain, but we have the privilege to seek solutions. And that's what I do for them. You know, you know, Mateka, something, there's some, something that is wrong with us when we sit down on a table yes. is that we can speak until tomorrow, you know? We can speak until... At some point, we I, have to I, stop I, and, and, yes, and, and but start I, tomorrow. I <laughs> wanted to touch on masturbation, if you will allow me. You, you, masturbation? Ile ya mstana, ile mstana. Apana, our masturbation as men. Uh, uh, why, our, why, why, don't we, why don't we start with it yes. on our polygamy in the next episode? Super. Yes, and then we go into into polygamy and, and monogamy. Fantastic. I know how I'm going to to to, to, to start it. Okay. But for now, we need to go. We know. I'm so hungry, man. <laughs> Hello there, people of the internet. Okay, so this is Mateka, a crazy guy. I love him. You know, Mateka. Yes. You make the world happy. Women uh, like you all the way to South Africa, all the way to the Barbados. Yeah, hmm? I, I love women too. Uh, that is not in contention. <laughs> <laughs> please leave a comment okay please tell this guy to subscribe Mateka. please this is the camera subscribe <laughs> like share subscribe again <laughs> share more with your friends and family until another episode bye for now